Welcome back to my next playthrough series. This time we're going to go back to Shadow Rift. I really do like this deck building game. You're basically defending a town. You've got villagers to help you out. You have visitors who show up. I'm not going to go into the rules per se because we played this on my channel. This is, I think, the fourth time. I did first edition a long time ago. This, of course, is the second edition. We did demons in second edition. I think we got crushed. And we did the necromancers last time. This time we're going to be taking on the drow. So uh, we're going to zoom down on the cards that we can purchase here. Everything else is the same. The might, the strike, the seals, the wounds, the heroism, the gold coins. You've seen it all before. Uh, and I don't know, this time maybe we'll try building some walls. Generally what we do in the game is, uh, I'm playing a two-player game as well. Again, it's easier just to, to handle two players than to try to do more or less. And we have to get through the Shadow Rift uh, uh, deck up here, the red one you can't quite see, it's the monster deck. We're looking for two shadow rifts. If we seal them, we win the game. Also, if we build all, I believe it's eight walls, not including the Tanglewood Rampart, which is an expansion. I do have the expansion for this as well. I think there's two expansions, I have them both, uh, which we might get into some expansion creatures uh, next time. This, is, of course, is part of the base game, the Drow. The Drow build totems. So we're going to take a look at the little Drow card here. Some information, background on the Drow. Then we're just going to get into some gameplay. You'll see how it works. The gameplay steps are all at the top of the board. Nicely laid out. Easy to follow. So let's take a look at the Drow. Alright, so here we have the Drow. It says, Legends tell of an ancient race born of stone and deep magic. We mortals are but temporary trespassers upon this, their sacred soil. The Drow have come to reclaim their birthright, the very earth will answer to their call. All right, so the drow construct enchanted totems to enhance their power. You'll want to seal these quickly. So yes, we're going to need seal cards as quickly as we can. And we separate the totems, put them face down. I've already done that. So this basically tells you how to set up uh, for the drow. So we'll be taking on the drow. I'm going to zoom out and we're going to just get into some gameplay. Alright, so gameplay is relatively simple. We basically follow the steps. I'm not sure if you can quite see them up there. First thing we do is draw cards. So we have a deck of our basic cards, which have, I believe, two strikes, uh, six uh, prowess, and one explore for each hand. So one, two, three, four, five cards. So the first thing we're doing, of course, is drawing our cards. See what we have. And it's simultaneous play, which is interesting. So we have two strikes, uh, prowess, and explore. Did I draw six cards? I did draw six cards. We'll put one back. They stuck together. All right, so we have two strikes and explore and two prowess. All right, not a great hand, but it is what it is. And the second player, we'll just shuffle them up a little bit more here and we'll draw five. If they don't stick together. Two, three, four, five. <laughs> All right, let's see what we've got here. A prowess, a prowess, a strike, prowess, and another explore. All right, that's basically step one. Next is to refresh the town. So we're just going to zoom down here. We're going to shuffle up our town deck. I think there's 14 cards here. Basically different townspeople to give us some buffs. And we're going to be placing five of them here. All right, so basically just move the camera down a little bit. All right, let's shuffle up the town deck. We're going to take a look at this. And we're going to see what we get. So we have, starting off in the town, we have a guard. Guards take the fall when <laughs> enemies attack. We have the merchant gain a gold coin. And we can use any number of townsfolk, uh, either player. The Fisherman, hey, look at the top two cards of your deck and you put a prowess card from among your revealed cards in your hand. That's nice. And we also have the Mayor. Uh, you can play an extra full action card this round. I don't think we have any in our starting hands. And we have the Trader Aid, reduce the cost of a Traveler by two prowess, or alternately discard a loot card from play to gain two coins. Of course, we have no loot cards in play. And as soon as I refresh the town and everything, we will take a look at the cards we can buy once we start playing our actions. All right, the next step we do uh, is we refresh the Traveler. So we're going to shuffle up the Traveler deck, and we're going to pull two Travelers out and see who's going to be visiting our town for this round. And just kind of zoom it up to the top of the board. All right, so we have this huge Traveler deck. Uh, so we're going to skip that another shuffle, just so you don't think I'm cooking the deck, which I am absolutely not doing, but this makes it all fair. All right, we have two travelers coming out. The first one we have is a young hero. If the young hero is the target of a hunt, he survives. The hunt ends and the monster takes one damage. Cool! It costs us one gold and three prowess to recruit him into our village if we want him to stay. The next one is Master at Arms. I had a couple of really good guards. Reaction, when a villager is about to be killed, discard the top three cards of the town deck 
If at least one is a wall or a guard, prevent the kill. Nice. Uh, costing three gold and four prowess. He's really expensive, but really helpful. Okay, that's that. Next we have Monsters Act. Well, as you can see uh, at the top, well, you can't quite see. We don't have any monsters at all going on. So what do we do next? Monsters gain power. Well, how does power work? You get one power per player. We're playing a two-player game. The power meter, I use a little bead here, it goes up to two. Well, now what do we do? Now we add monsters. Well, to add monsters, I'm just going to readjust camera slightly. We're going to take a look at the monster deck. All right, so we're at the add monster phase. So let's take a look at our first monster, and we have the Stone Claw Pincher at six health, costing four power to have him come out. We only have two power. He's not going to come out. Each hero gains a wound uh, if there are three totems when Stone Claw Pincher acts. Ooh, so he's going to. If he, when he's at monster step one, two, or three, it tells you what you're going to do here. So we're not going to worry about it right now. He's sitting with four power to come out. He's just going to sit on top of the monster deck. He's not going to come out. So what do we do next? We have heroes act. So we readjust the camera again, and we're going to have our heroes doing our things. But of course, first we have to take a look at our uh, cards here uh, to see what it is we have to deal with that we can buy this turn. All right, so these are the eight cards. So in the in the uh, manual, it actually tells you which cards to set up if you're dealing with which creatures. And so I just followed that. You can you can do it randomly as well, but we're going to go ahead and follow what it says for the drow for setup. And these are the eight cards it tells you to use. So we have leading strike. At the top left corner, you see uh, the little white symbol. That means it's a full action. You can only do one of those on your turn. You can't do two unless you have the mayor, which we actually do, unless you have play two of those on a turn. All right, per player, not per uh, combined players. So we have leading strike. We'll get into the details if we recruit these cards. Costing five prowess. Fireball, which is always a fun one. Costing four. Prophecy. In the top right, you can see that blue symbol. That gives you a magic ability as well. Uh, you can't play it for yourself on your card, but it, if you play it down, it does give you one magic. So we have Prophecy, we have Resurrect, which I believe removes corpses from play. That's always a good thing, because we will have corpses eventually. We have the Brawler, uh, three prowess. Of course, Resurrect is five prowess. These are very expensive cards, some of them. Flanking, three prowess. Shining Blade is a loot card, costing three gold. And Lightning Dagger is also a loot card, costing two gold. All right, we're going to back out. We're going to have our players uh, start recruiting and start doing actions using Townsfolk, and we'll see what we can do. All right, so it's simultaneous play. So it basically means players uh, cooperatively work together uh, to do what they can do. So basically our strike cards are not going to do us any good because there are no monsters out uh, in any space for us to hit. So they basically are kind of useless this turn. So player one has an explore and it's got two prowess. Uh, but what we're going to do first, I think we're going to take a look at our uh, characters down here, Townsfolk. And it's simultaneous play, so we're just going to go ahead and do it. The merchant gives us add a gold coin. So we're going to use him. He's just going to go ahead and give us a gold coin, which is nice. Uh, the fisherman here says, look at the top two cards of your deck. You may put one prowess card from among them, among the revealed cards into your hand. We're going to do that for player two, because player two has three prowess. It would be very nice for player two to get four. So we're going to take a look at the top two cards. There's a prowess, one, two. So yeah, we're gonna grab the prowess, we're gonna put it into hand. So now player two has got four prowess, which is awesome. It's really what we need. Ah, uh, what else do we have for townsfolk? We have the mayor, uh, lets you play two of the full actions in one round. We're not gonna do that, because we don't have full actions to play. And the trader lets you reduce the cost of a traveler by two. We have the young hero, Master of Arms. So let me do a little thinking here. We're going to come back and we're going to start purchasing cards and uh, maybe recruiting some villagers. I don't know. We'll see. Some travelers, I mean. Okay. I think what we're going to do, we're going to have player two is going to take all three, four. We're just going to take all four prowess. Uh, and we're going to go ahead right now, spend that and get a seal. As we know from previous games, the seal is very, very important unless you seal Shadow Rifts, if you uh, do a magic with it. And you can also put 
the uh, card from the monster play area, which adds power every turn to the bottom of the monster deck. So seals are very, very useful in this game. It's good to get them as quickly as possible. We have an explore and a strike left. Uh, player two has got two prowess, two strikes, and explore. Of course, the strikes don't do anything. Um, the explore we're going to take a look at. We can spend the two prowess to get another gold coin. Uh, or maybe we should think about recruiting the young hero. And I think we're going to do that. We're going to spend one prowess from player one's hand, the one gold coin, and the tra uh, the trader, which gives you reduce any cost of a traveler by two uh, prowess. So that means we are able to recruit the young hero into our village because we've spent the one gold and three prowess, two from the trader, one from player one's hand. We have the young hero now in our town. So we're going to put that into our town discard pile. And when we run out of townsfolk to lay out here, we reshuffle our discard pile. They start coming back again. All right, we also now have an explorer in either player's hand. So let's take a look at, we'll look at player two's explorer card. You can look at the top card of the trader deck. You may put it in the bottom of the deck. And that's good to know because if it's an infiltrator, we can then uh, shove him to the bottom of the deck. It is the Explorer. The Explorer is a good card, a uh, good traveler. So put the top card of your monster deck on the bottom. Ooh, nice. So we're going to go ahead and leave the traveler on the top of the deck there. So we played our card. We don't have a gold coin. We could put, if we spent a gold, you can put the top card of the monster deck on the bottom. We're not going to worry about the pincer beast there at the moment. And that's basically it. So player one also has an explorer card, but there's really not much point in playing it. So very quickly, I think we're going to end off our episode here for today. That's kind of each of our characters playing everything they need to do. So first thing, we now we do cleanup. So we basically discard all of the uh, villagers we didn't use. All of the travelers that were left over go on the bottom of the traveler deck. They'll show up again maybe later if we survive that long. And that's cleanup. And of course, we would then uh, discard all cards in hand, played or not played, gone. And we're going to be, I guess we're going to draw cards at the end of the episode so we can see what's coming up. So we're going to be, the start of the turn is to draw cards. So we're going to draw the five cards for player one. So player one's going to have five prowess. Ooh, nice. Lots of buying power there next time. And player two then draws up. They've got four, they're going to have to shuffle and draw another one. they got three prowess, strike. And we're going to shuffle up the discard. Maybe we we'll get that seal. That would be really cool. I don't know. We'll see what happens with that. And one more card. They get the Explorer. That's actually pretty good. So we have another Explorer Strike. Three Prowess for Player 2 for next episode. So this is Shadow Rift 2nd Edition. We're playing against the Drow. And we're just in the opening stages. Things are going to get really ugly, of course. Uh, so there you go. So thanks so much for watching along. Thanks for your comments, subscriptions, likes. Really appreciate it. This is Shadow Rift 2nd Edition. I forgot to mention how you lose the game. You lose the game if your town is ever full of infiltrators and or corpses. Basically means your town has been destroyed. How you win the game is you seal both of the Shadow Rifts. You put one Shadow Rift per player in, which I've already shuffled the two Shadow Rifts. The top half of the deck, the bottom half of that, of that deck, of this sort of the monster deck. And if you build all eight of the towers or walls for your town, you immediately win. <laughs> yeah, right. Okay, so thanks so much, and we'll see you tomorrow for the continuation Shadow Rift 2nd Edition. We're playing against the Drow.